Hi guys, welcome to this Microsoft Excel module. What I would like to look at in this session is the power pivot measures and KPIs. So first of all, I've got some raw data on the screen, which I just quickly need to go and clean to get rid of some of these blanks that, that there are in this column. So I'll go to the data tab and activate the power query editor and then in the sum of amount column, I just want to get rid of no and zero. OK. And then I can load this back up. So I'll call this clean data. Now I want to add this to the power pivot. I can do it from there, but I'm going to go to power pivot actually. Add to the data model. And then it's already been added, so it's just added it again. So there it is. And from there, I can create a pivot table. So pivot table, new workbook, new worksheet, not new workbook. And the table is 1.2. And you can see all the, all the fields there. Now, if I just add, what do I want to add? Customer name and sum of amount and I'll just format sum of amount to pounds so it shows it in pounds like that okay now the problem with this is that that is 14,000 records with that data in there now I, if I, I want to create a KPI you can't create a KPI on this field and if I go to power pivot uh, pivot table analysis these are all grayed out, these calculated fields. So when, I, when I've come from the power pivot window, these are, are not active. If I just did a normal pivot table, they would be active and I could do calculations. But like I've already said, there would be 14,000 records, 14,000 totals. Whereas if I create a measure, it will only show me the total for AB Wessex, for example. If I filtered to AB Wessex, it would just show me that total and it would only use that amount of memory. So that's what I'm going to do. So first off, I need to create a measure that will just duplicate this. So back to the power pivot and you've got measures and KPI. So measure, new measure, it's just going to be, I'll call it total. And it's, if I just type sum, it'll come up. Sum of, sum of amount basically. That's what I want. Okay. So I get a complete mirror image of the other one, but this is a measure, so I can um, still do the number formatting, but now I can do a KPI on it. And now I don't need this one. I just need that. So to do a KPI, you go to KPIs, new KPI, and it's based on total, because that's the only measure I have. And what I'm going to do is do a fixed amount for this example. So any of these that are over 10,000, so 10,000, I want it to be green. And 4,000 to 8,000 is going to be amber or yellow, and then everything else will be red. And I'll click OK to that. And it creates a series of numbers, which doesn't really mean anything, but what you'll have in your pivot table field list is this is expandable now if I take that off and put it back on it now appears as those symbols and you can see there's a few greens and a few ambers so that's the total status in terms of 10,000 I should have renamed that actually so I will rename that um, manage KPIs edit that one instead of calling it um, this measure I need to edit manage measure edit so in, instead of calling it total I will say over 10,000 I'll do okay close and we've got over 10,000 now the KPI, I'll have to do a 
again because it's based on UKPI. I don't have any measures. Okay, it's already there. So it's over 10,000 status, that's it. It just deselected that for some reason. Now another one I want to do, another measure, if I want to know what the first date was that I did training for this company and what the last date was that I did train for this company. So in new measures, you can, I'll call it first date. And then it's going to be equals, in fact, I'll go into the FX because it gives you all the function options. So some of these functions are very similar to Excel, but others are not. So quite a few of these ones in the date ones are not available in normal Excel. But there's first date, I went past it. First date, double click that. And then it's one in dates. So the first date I've got, or the date field, it's going to be from date of training. I think it's called, I can't see it. I should have looked it up. Date of training, that one. Close the brackets, click OK. And it drops it in. Now I need to edit that because I don't want the date and time. First date, edit. So it is a date, but I don't want that. I want just that one, short date. Okay, close that, so just gets rid of that, and then I do that again, measure, new measure for the last date, so I'll call this last date, last date, FX, date and time, and finding last date, that one. And inside the brackets, I'm, I'm typing date of training again. Close the bracket. So that's the last date. Oh, missed out the same thing. Edit last date. I don't want all of that. So it's date. And I want the short date, not the time. Obviously, there are occasions that you would want the time. So you can see that this is getting quite full down here now with all these different values that's coming in there. And that's now probably too long, but never mind. Now what I want to do is I want to know in months uh, from today how long it was since I last did training with this company. So I did, or let's, let's do it this differently. So how many months did I do training? So I'll do a measure that will do date difference between those in months. So let's go for a new measure. So... Um, duration, I'll call it duration months and then now what I'm doing here is um, using a date function, date time function and it's called date diff, now you do have this in Excel but it's with one F so it's between um, first date and last date in months, so first date so square bracket, first date, comma, square bracket, last date, comma, and then month, close bracket. Okay. Uh, so that's, I did training, that period was 53 months. That was 11 months I did training for that company. 46 months duration I did training for that company. So now how many sessions did I do? So I need a count here. So I want to do count of amount. So let's have a do let's have a go at count of amount. So new measure, call it um, number of courses. So it's just going to be a simple count here. So find count in this list. Count. Um, sum of amount. Close the bracket. 
So that's the number of courses, 7, 2, 1, 2, 12. And I could do a few KPIs on this, but um, what have I got there? Over status. So let's have a, a measure that's going to see how long it was since I last did training. So that was 2018, but that one there is 2011 since I last did training with that company. And I did three courses with them anyhow. So let's do another measure that's going to work out um, how many days um, it is. So a new measure. Call this um, laps. And I want a date difference again. So date functions, date diff. So this is going to be between um, last date, last date, comma, and then the function today. And I want that in months as well. Close the bracket. So 20. 22 months. Now I want to do another measure and a KPI this time that's going to work out if that's more than um, 6 months, 12 months or 24 months away. So I can do it on there actually. Let's do it on here. KPI and this laps. KPI, new KPI. It's going to be on laps. So if you've got, you can sometimes do um, one measure against another measure but this one, I want it to be, let's go for 36 months. And um, so if that's 12, 24, now I want it that way around. So 12 is good. So 12 and the red, red would be bad. Okay, so click OK to that. Then I need to go and find it in here. Laps. Just take it on and off. So eight months ago, I did training with that company. So that's green. I was 20 months, so that's amber. And you can see as you come down, there's a few more greens further down. Um, but what it does show you is that... There is quite a, in, in my business, quite a lot of companies that I've done training for and sometimes quite a lot of training, you know, over a period, but I've not done it in the last two, three years. Perhaps I should do some marketing and chase them up. So basically this is um, how you can do measures and then add KPIs on these things if you so wish, uh, it's just a visual indicator. You can still add conditional formatting to these if you so wish, and you can maneuver these around like you can in any pivot table just by moving these fields around. So if I put this one down a little bit, it was harder to move than I thought. Okay, I did move it, but anyhow. Move that over there. So now the status, both the status indicators are in the left. I'm not sure if I like those or not. But that is all I wanted to cover on this little bit. So thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next one.